So you have completed your assessment of how much you eat and drink in a day. Now what, right? So as you look at these numbers in whatever app you've chosen to, to use, you know, and keep track of throughout the day, and then it's like, great, now what? I have all this data, but what does it mean? Especially if you're new to tracking and using nutrition apps like this, right? So at the end of the day, everything you have logged, I want you to be able to look at a few things. Now this takes time, it takes practice. Honestly, anything that we're doing, I feel like with the health fitness journey, it, it's like learning to play the piano. The more you do it, the more comfortable you become, uh, the better you practice, you know, consistently throughout the week. Also, this gets easier and easier. And then you'll be like, oh, I don't even remember when this was challenging, right? You're gonna come across questions and that's why you're you know, welcome to ask me. So when I look at my app at the end of the day, a couple things I wanna notice. One, the only things I'm looking for are the daily calorie total and then where mine was, right? Am I over? Did I overeat? If I was supposed to hit 1,600 calories in a day, did I hit that? Was I over maybe at 18, 1,900 or was it under 1,500, right? So we have a calorie goal for that day. It includes all of our movement and exercise. So keep in mind that if you ran, you know, burn 600 calories at the gym, we don't care about those calories. They don't interact with the calorie goal number that you have. So it's not like you're gonna delete that or adjust the number, right? Don't look at any of your exercise. The calorie number on your app that, that me or another coach has given you is the number that includes everything. We're just gonna go off that. So you're gonna look and see, hey, I hit it. Or, oh my gosh, I'm way over. No wonder I'm not losing body fat. Or you're way under, and then it's like, whoa, if I'm way, way under, now I realize why I'm not gaining muscle and strength, or I feel lethargic, or my hormones are off, or I feel tired, right? We have different emotions and feelings, um, depending on if we're over or under our calorie goal. Now, if you're within like 100 calories of your daily goal, I'm, I'm okay with that, right? Like I'm proud of myself for getting that close. There will always be discrepancies because we're not perfect, right? We attempt to measure as close as we can. The food labels were, you know, we're scanning on our, on our barcode round down. So that's not even 100% accurate. We've got some calories there. If we're eating out and we have to estimate how much those foods are, or we just trust the serving sizes that somebody there gave us on our plate, right? There's a lot of discrepancies throughout the day. We eyeball something, we don't weigh it correctly, we don't track something because we grazed off our kid's plate or had a sample at Costco and you, you don't enter it, right? There's always gonna be some gray room. And generally we're over, right? Rather than under, because we typically forget to log or we log it less than what it actually is. So with that said, if you're around 100 calories below or above, you're doing great. Um, next, what do we want to look at, right? We've got that calorie number. Then you've got protein. That's the second thing that I really care about because for numerous reasons, one protein is important at a cellular level. It repairs all tissue. You're burned. It's the first thing the doctor will say, right? To repair the skin, increase your daily protein. So my job is to change your body shape, right? As a coach and to get you in a position to where you have as much muscle as, as possible, not only to build, you know, toned or jacked arms or whatever you want to call them that you're looking for, or to get even just strong, but more better functional mobility and movement so that in five, 10, 15 years, you have the muscle that will support the body as you age. You're going to be able to still move and get off chairs, right? I'm looking at this long term. So we need to make sure that we're eating enough protein because building that strong body, building your protein is going to be, or excuse me, building the muscle is going to be based on how much protein you eat, right? In addition to a few other things like your workout program and how many calories you have. But I need to know how many, how many grams of protein are you actually getting every single day? So that number is going to be important. Also, if you're looking at a goal of body fat loss, right? If that's a result that you would like, then we need to focus on maintaining our protein every single day so that as you're losing body, you know, you're, as you're losing weight, it's not gonna be body fat and muscle, it's just gonna be body fat and as little as muscle as possible. So again, when we're in a deficit, we don't wanna lose muscle, right? That gives us the shape. And so we wanna have as much protein as possible to maintain that integrity and the structure of the, of the uh, muscle in the body. So it is really important. Uh, protein also keep you full for longer. So that's awesome. Have protein at every single snack and meal if possible. We burn more calories digesting protein. So it's great. Um, there's many benefits to having protein. So that's the second thing I want you to hit. And then it's always eye opening to see, oh my gosh, I'm way above or below or hey, I'm proud of myself. I had no idea I was eating that much. I'm closer to my goal than I thought, right? And then the next thing we want to look at is fiber. 
Um, for females, it's around 25 grams. They say anywhere from 25 to up to 35, 30, 35 for men, but women want to aim for at least 25 grams through whole foods. You've always got supplements, right? But add those in if you're doing a supplement. We wanna get that from as many fruits and vegetables as possible because there is so much nutrient density to those uh, fruits and vegetables. So pro, uh, fiber is a really big thing. That's another thing we wanna watch. And again, as you're looking at these things, it's a it's basically like a snapshot of your daily habits. So it's important to look at this because, you know, you can see just the numbers in, and think of it as a puzzle. Like, oh crap, my protein's high, my carbs are low. I'm here, I'm here. What do I do? Well, it's not just a numbers game of like, well, what food can I put here so that this number is higher versus lower? No, I want you to look at. What am I eating? What's my identity? Am I someone, yeah, I'm not someone that really is great at eating protein, right? That's my identity, that's my choice, that's what I do every day, I'm not really good at hitting protein. Well, we wanna adjust that habit, work on it by doing lots of little things, which we'll talk about in other videos, to adjust those habits, so that you can then say, yeah, I've worked really hard, and now I am, right, our identity I am statements, I am someone that hits their protein every day. So we look at this habits and we've got to figure out a plan of action and, and really change this so it's easy to hit our protein and easy to hit our fiber, easy to hit our calories every single day because that's just kind of the person that you are now, right? And so it says a lot. These aren't just numbers and plug and play. They literally sum up all of your habits throughout the day. Now you've got the other two numbers. I mean, there's multiple numbers on here, but you've got your carbs, and you've got your fats. So those two, if you want to go a step further and track all of your macros, macros are, calories and macros are pretty much the same, right? You have your calories and those are your macros, but it's just broken down into more subgroups. And so it tells you out of all those calories you have for the day, so much of them is protein, so much is supposed to be carbs, and so much is supposed to be fats. And the main thing we wanna track is calories and protein, because calories determine if you're gonna lose or gain body fat or muscle, and protein determines what you look like when you get there. And so if you're in a deficit, right, and you wanna lose 30 pounds, that's great, but what are you gonna look like 30 pounds less? We want you to have muscle, right? Some toned look, so that protein's gonna help that. So those are the two main things. And then, then if you're like, yeah, I can handle this, I'm gonna track fats and carbs, that's the next thing. Those are our two fuel sources. So when you look at those numbers, generally speaking, because everyone's a little different, um, you want no less than 40 grams of fat a day. Now keep in mind, if you eat fat in your foods throughout the day, that does not equal to body fat and making you fat and more fat on the scale when you stand on it, right? It doesn't work like that. This is two separate things. Fats are good for you. They regulate your hormones. So if you feel lethargic, tired, lost your sex drive, um, low energy, among numerous other things, it might be because you're not getting enough daily fat grams. Minimum of 40 for women. Very, very important. Now you also um, look at your carbs, right? Um, I like to suggest no fewer than 100 grams of carbs a day. This one is definitely a little bit different because we've got people that do keto. We've got people that just don't respond well to carbs. Um, people that are on the carnivore diet, right? Um, people that are carb cycling, people that are certain body types do better cycling and having lower carbs. Um, there's a lot that, that goes into those two numbers. Again, as both fuel sources, you just don't ever want both of them very, very low. If one is lower, one needs to be higher, right? Or at least at an equal percentage. Um, because you'll see that the numbers that are set on your app from protein, carbs, and fat, they're different percentages. So generally protein, uh, we want as one gram of protein per pound of gold body weight because we don't need protein for body fat. So that's the best way we can estimate. Now the general rule is actually 0.8 to 1.2. So you can go up a little bit or below a bit of it, but we average right in the middle at one gram. So that's why uh, that number is set, how that one is. It doesn't ever move. Literally will always stay the same. Now, if your goal weight changes, right, up or down, we can adjust the protein, but there's also a percentage of your diet because we always pull protein first. That's the most important one. And I typically like it between 30 to 40% of your diet is protein. If you have a lot more body fat to lose, we can tend to raise that protein just a little bit more. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room. And once we set that protein and get those grams and percents down, then whatever's left goes to carbs and fat. Generally, those can be balanced. Um, you may also find that you do better on a higher fat diet or a higher carb diet. And we just gotta try that, right? Generally, they're balanced. Most people are good either way, but you may see your body responds much better to one or the other. So we test them, because there's not a right or wrong, right? So I found I did high, high carbs and a little bit lower fat for a long time. I hit 40, 41, and my body said, no way. I also developed a gluten intolerance that I didn't realize I had. Um, finally, I should say maybe almost figured out that I had one. And so my carbs dropped 
dramatically and I found I did way better on higher fats. So you just adjust things as you go. Every single person is different. You want to feel like you have energy. You want to feel satiated and full. And that's why we mess with these numbers. So it can be very overwhelming. That's why you have a coach to help you, especially with one-on-one -on -one coaching where they dive down to a specifically what you need each week. But generally as a recap, you want to look at the calories, make sure you're within 100 calories of your goal. You want to make sure your protein is as close as you can get to what's set. You want to look at your fiber, make sure that you're getting minimum of, or I should say about 25 grams a day. And then between your carbs and fats, you can make sure that you're at least getting a minimum of, like we said, 100 grams of sugar, carbs, and 40 grams for fat. And also, when we look at these, we can say, okay, let's look at the, the habits that I have with these carbs and fats, because usually the carbs are very high. And so if your whole macros are listed in your app, and it says you should have 160 grams of carbs a day, but you're at 260, that tells you, not that you don't track well, it tells you that you have habits that you're eating a lot of carbs and your goal doesn't give you that many. So that might indicate, oh, it's that food group that's putting me over. Because if you have 1500 calories to eat in a day and you're pretty close to your protein grams, pretty close to your fat grams, way over on your carb grams, that tells you the food group that you're overeating and you need to cut back on to get your calories more in line with where they need to be. Because it can be overwhelming if you're like, wow, I was at 1900 calories, I'm supposed to be at 1500. How did I do that? How do I adjust that? How do I reduce it? Well, then look at each of the targets, right? Between fats, carbs, and protein. And if there's one group, like I said, like carbs, it's way up, then that's what you know, I gotta scale back in that food group. So don't cut back in the protein as much. Don't come back in the healthy fats, especially cut back on those carbs. Now we have uh, really, I mean, carbs we need to have. They're our fuel source, they're energy. So I'm talking about healthy carbs, like grains. I'm talking about fruits talking about vegetables. Those are the things that we want to have a lot of. And that's our building base, you know, block and base of carbs. Additionally, you have your treat for the day, right? Um, and from there, it, it depends on, on what your eating habits are, right? Then we get to all the processed, crappy, non-nutrient dense carbs, right? The candies, the treats, the sodas, um, all of those things that, that you'll see in your habits when you look at it. And don't get overwhelmed like, oh my gosh, I'm under on protein, I'm under on fiber, my carbs are through the roof, my fats are through the roof. And when I'm looking at my fats, because I can see what I input it every day, they're mostly unhealthy. They're not too many healthy ones. I gotta switch that around. Oh my gosh, my calories are over. Um, and track water intake also, I'm not getting enough water. And then it's like, oh my gosh, don't even know where to start, what do I do? So that's where we step back and say, this is a tool to assess what we're doing. Don't let it overwhelm you. Give it, I like to see it as giving me hope because then at that point, I know there's something I can change. Because so often you'll say, I'm doing everything possible to see change, right? What else am I supposed to do? Well, you look at your, your habit journal here in your app that you've taken for a day, two days, three days a week, and you see what needs to change. So again, don't view it as numbers and the numbers are off. Look at the habit of that category and how to adjust that habit so it's long-term, right? Because you're gonna feel better when those numbers are aligned. The, the macro numbers are just serving sizes. They're just a reflection of what you're doing every day. So I don't care about those, right? Fix the habits, the numbers will more naturally align. Now, another question I'll get is, hey, at the end of the day, um, my fats and carbs are pretty much where they are, but I'm under on protein, right? So then my calories are a little bit off. And it could be, um, I mean, there's so many scenarios. Like I'm, I'm over on fats, but under on protein. I'm at my calorie number. But the problem is I need more protein and I eat too much fat. Like, what do I do because my protein's still down? Do you see how convoluted it can kind of get because everyone's a little different and every day will be different? If you are low on protein, but you're at your calorie number, right? That means we didn't prioritize protein for the day. That happens occasionally. Maybe it happens a lot. That's what we're going to work on, right? We're developing that habit. So I, at the end of the night, will try to find an item that has the least amount of fats and carbs in it, but is a high protein. So sometimes certain meats are great because they've got 30 grams of protein. So you're like, great, that's a great snack. But it also has many, many grams of fat. So if you ate that at night, you know, a source that has a lot of protein, but also a lot of fat, that's gonna jack your calories way up. So that's not something you'd want at the end of the day. So you wanna find an item that has pretty high protein to help fill that protein, you know, need that you still have, but that also is lower in carbs and fats. So um, there's quite a few things you can you can find um, that are good for protein sources. Um, the one that I usually go for is, my, that's when I use a protein shake at the end of the night. So I use, as you guys know, the Protein Formula One. Um, use my links if you wanna try that because it is very low carb and fat and lower calorie, but higher in protein. So that fits that example perfectly. That's when I use it at the end of the night. It's not thick because there's no carbs or fats in it generally. 
And so um, it, it's, it's a perfect solution. So find something that's similar to that. Low fats, carbs, it'll be a little bit lower calorie because of that, but it'll be high protein. So if you were ever under on protein and you go over your calories due to protein, that is mostly protein, not fats, I'm okay with calories being over. So if you're 100, 200 calories over due to a high protein source to hit that protein goal, that's awesome. We'll burn those calories up really fast. So that's usually a question that I'll get. So again, as we look at your habits, right? The numbers are just a reflection, but as we look at the habits, use that to look at my fats. Wow, I eat a lot of this item and this item and this item, but I don't really have many healthy fats like avocado or extra virgin olive oil, right? My oils could be healthier or nuts or anything, you know, a good a meat that has a good healthy um, fat in it. Um, we got to look at those. Are they all from processed foods? Well, we don't, we definitely don't want that. And that's where we go to our carbs also. Like I mentioned before, are there a lot of fruits and veggies? And this would be a good assessment is, whoa, out of seven days, I had veggies on three of them, one serving size. And we're supposed to be having quite a few more than that. That's why my fiber is so low. So that gives you something to look at. So when you've got it all in front of you and you've tracked for a couple days in a row, you can get a good idea of where you are. Some days are better than others. Track on a stress day, a busy day, right? Each of those non-busy, non-stress to see how you do differently. And then you can then pick what you want to work on. So that's another video where we're going to talk about an action plan and how we do that with realistic expectations and where do we go from there. I just want you to be able to look at the day and say, oh my gosh, there's a lot I need to adjust that's hopeful, right? Because now you know you still have things you can change. You'll still see the results you want, which is way better, like I said before, of doing everything. Why am I not seeing change? So we're only going to pick one or two, three things max. We're going to focus on those habits. The rest can just stay. They're not the goal. And again, we'll talk about how to change those and everything at another time. This is more of just what do I do when I look at this and what am I looking for? So there's other numbers. You can get very specific with everything. I don't want to overwhelm you. I've just covered the ones that are the most important and the basics because then you can look at those numbers, which again are just the habits you're at and you can assess what you need to adjust. And then every day we need a little more or a little less and those numbers will definitely better align.